First things first, animate the lid bursting open. I'm doing this at frame 100 so I have some wiggle room before and after to establish a final shot duration. Keep the keyframes close together initially so the action is punchy, and then gradually increase the distance between keyframes so the action believably comes to a stop. Remember that we're going for a bullet time-like effect soon after the explosion happens, which means we want to exaggerate the slowdown of the action more than usual. Also, it helps to make explosion noises like psh and psh to get this right. Once the animation is right, add a cube to model simple colliders to represent the interior surfaces of the chest. Then parent the top one to the lid rim so it follows the animation. Select both colliders and set them as passive rigid bodies. Passive essentially means they will be calculated as static or hand animated collision objects. Be sure to enable animation in the rigid body settings as well since we animated the lid. Also change the shape for both colliders to mesh instead of convex hull. Change the setting for both by holding Alt when you click on the setting. Next, select all the coins by right clicking on their collection. Note, I have a little over a thousand coins. Set them as active rigid bodies. This means they're entirely at the mercy of the dynamic simulation, falling with gravity and bouncing off of passive rigid bodies as well as fellow active rigid bodies. Also set their weight to five grams. The default one kilogram makes them way heavier than coins should be. And one last collider, add a plane for the ground and possibly add some extra edge loops if you find your coins falling through the floor. More geometry means less potential for penetration. Global rigid body settings are found in the scene tab. I'm changing the start frame of the simulation to 97, a few frames before the explosion occurs, then end it at 200. Finally, we can add the protagonist collider, an icosphere that represents a rapid expansion of energy that sends the coins exploding outward. I first keyframe the object scaled down four frames before the explosion, then scale it up at the point of explosion and scale back down four frames after so it stays out of the way of the bouncing coins. Hit play in the viewport to watch the simulation occur. And if your burst is underwhelming, increase the scale up keyframe of the icosphere. I also found that the coins burst too far outward and leave the camera frame too much. So I duplicate the icosphere so the energy keeps most of the coins central. Again, explosion noises are crucial to dialing in this effect correctly. Let's clean up the scene a little bit by adding all the colliders to a collection that can easily be hidden in the viewport and in the render. If you have any problematic coins pass through the colliders like I do, simply disable it from the viewport and from the render. Easily focus on any specific coins with the period key on the number pad in the outliner. You can also adjust the margin values for your passive and active rigid bodies. Higher values make penetration less likely but also increases the collision gap. You can see here how my coins are resting on the bottom rim with a noticeable gap. So I keep the margin high to avoid initial pass through and then animate the margin value lower for when the coins fall so they rest believably on the rim. The final aspect of the rigid body simulation is the bullet time slowdown effect. Conveniently, the global rigid body settings has a speed option. We can simply add a keyframe at one, the normal rate, shortly after the explosion occurs, then add another keyframe lowering the rate to 0.2, 10 to 15 frames later. Play back the animation several times and fine tune the placement of these keyframes till the effect is just right. Then bake your exquisite simulation. Now it's time for the camera. Add a camera object and lock the camera to view, positioning the angle centered on the chest, looking slightly up from below. Once you're happy, disable the lock camera to view and add an empty to the center of the scene. Parent the camera to the empty and rotate the empty to achieve camera spin. Add a keyframe to denote the beginning of the sequence, frame 70 in my case, then rotate the empty around to the other side and set an end keyframe at 200. This gives me the final duration of the shot as well as some introductory spin of the chest before it bursts open. Switching to the animation workspace, let's set the empties keyframes to linear so the motion is consistent. No slow in or slow out. Oh, and for the bullet time slowdown, I need to add another keyframe shortly after the explosion to slow the turn. Now, what's an explosion without camera shake? I like to start the shake a few frames before the burst. So a default keyframe at 97. 
Then every two or three frames, add a new keyframe randomizing the camera's angle. After three close together, I start spreading new keyframes further apart, slightly diminishing the angle differences of each. Finally, shake frames six and seven are spread much further apart to cover both the slowdown of the shake and the slowdown of bullet time. Lastly, I slowly rotate the camera upward to follow the coins, smoothing their F curves to taste. For lighting, I like to start with a nighttime HDRI environment texture. This yellow is not what I'm looking for, so I hue shift it to blue in the shading workspace. Then we can enable the usual EV suspects like ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. I'm starting with a cool world and then adding really warm lights to both sides of the chest. I'm keeping things stylized and saturated. One more light from the upper back, a cool blue light, and then select all lights and alt click to enable contact shadows for each one. For this shot, I want to do almost everything in the render, including a background gradient plane. To do this, I look through the camera and add a plane and choose to align it to view. Parent to the camera and move it backward behind the overall scene. Now we can add a material and a gradient texture. Object coordinates into a spherical gradient will create a circle in the center of the plane similar to a vignette. I make it blue to correspond to the cool fill of the HDRI environment. And finally, I want to add some volumetric fog so we have some depth in this scene. Scale a cube in edit mode to encompass everything, add a material and swap out the principled BSDF for a principled volume shader node. Once again, we will use the gradient texture to define the density of our fog. This time the default linear gradient works, but needs object coordinates and rotation in the Y axis. Use a color ramp to dial in the vertical fall off of the fog. And the last thing I want from the fog is to feel broken up which makes it feel more like smoke now that I'm saying it out loud. A noise texture is great for this when overlaid on the vector input. Dial down the white flag to diminish the strength of the fog. And yeah, EV volumetrics are pretty amazing by the way. Oh, and I forgot one of the usual EV suspects, Bloom. Turn that junk on. Yeah, that's looking good. The only other thing I want in the render that EV can't currently do is object motion blur. This is where we tap into cycles for some hybrid nuttiness. First, I make sure all my objects are put into reasonable collections, like throwing the volume fog object, lights, and camera into a render collection. These will all be disabled in the cycle scene to save render time. Rename the scene Eevee and view layer to Eevee Beauty. Then create a linked copy of the scene and call it Cycles and the view layer Cycles Vector. Disable the render collection and switch the engine to Cycles. Enable the vector render pass and change render samples to one and performance tiles to 64. Remember, we only need the vector pass. We don't want to wait on cycles any longer than we have to. Now we can jump back over to the EV scene and make sure our colliders are disabled for rendering. Then find a frame that we know has a lot of motion, like as soon as the chest bursts open. We can hop into the compositing workspace, duplicate our render layer node and select the cycles scene and view layer. Plug in the necessary sockets to a vector blur node and do a test render. If you see stuttered blur like this, you just need to increase the vector blur samples. Last but not least, a simple vignette overlay. I have to add one, it's a sickness. Now we're ready to render the final animation as a movie file. Choose an output directory, select FFmpeg as the file type, set the encoder and hit render animation. If you like the treasure chest project, there's a lot more where this comes from. Be sure to check out the full in-depth and real-time courses at cgcookie.com, covering modeling, texturing, shading, rendering, rigging, and animation with Blender 2.8.